What do you need to do before becoming pregnant? How can you prepare for pregnancy so that it's as safe and healthy as possible? Here are six topics you should discuss with your OBGYN provider to make sure you're ready for pregnancy. Hey everyone, my name is Dr. Graham Dersna. Welcome back to my channel, where we discuss topics related to obstetrics, gynecology, and sexual health. If you find value in these videos, I encourage you to subscribe, like the video, and leave a comment. If you're considering or actively trying to become pregnant, you should schedule a pre-pregnancy counseling session with your OBGYN provider. This visit is important because it allows you to discuss several areas of your health and well-being that will either be affected by the pregnancy or will have an effect on the pregnancy. In this video, we'll cover six topics that you should review during your visit to optimize your health before pregnancy and reduce the risk of complications for you and the fetus. Stick around to the end for an additional topic to review with your provider. Many medical conditions impact pregnancy and a developing fetus, and at the same time, the pregnancy can worsen the medical condition. Therefore, it's extremely important to review your medical conditions with your OBGYN provider. If it's curable, for example, an infection of gonorrhea or chlamydia, then you should receive treatment. If it's a chronic illness, it should be as well managed as possible. Examples of medical conditions that need to be optimized before pregnancy include high blood pressure, diabetes, asthma, obesity, high or low thyroid levels, any psychiatric illness, seizure disorders, HIV, and bleeding or clotting disorders. Several medications can lead to birth defects when taken in pregnancy. Commonly, this occurs at the beginning of pregnancy when the fetal body and organs are still developing, but the medications may cause negative effects or other complications later in pregnancy. Review all prescription, non-prescription, and herbal medications and supplements with your provider to find out which ones are safe in pregnancy and which ones need to be changed. For example, most seizure medications should not be used in pregnancy, but it's important to balance the benefits of optimizing your medical condition with the risks of using a medication that can have detrimental effects on a pregnancy. Several illnesses and infections can be life-threatening to the fetus or the newborn, so during the visit you can get blood work to check your immunity and receive a booster vaccine if needed. Examples of vaccines you might need include MMR, varicella, Tdap, hepatitis B, the flu, and COVID, and there may be others depending on where you live in the world. Daily habits that should be discussed include your diet, exercise, smoking, and the use of caffeine, alcohol, and drugs. When it comes to your diet, meeting the recommended daily intake of vitamins and minerals, especially folic acid, is key to a healthy pregnancy. Prenatal vitamins can be started any time before pregnancy and continued into the postpartum period. There are also many foods that should be avoided to reduce the risk of infection, such as listeria, salmonella, and E. coli. Examples include raw or undercooked meat, deli meat, undercooked eggs, raw fish, and unpasteurized milk, cheeses, and juice. There is no safe amount of alcohol use or nicotine use in pregnancy. Both should be stopped before pregnancy occurs. And it's recommended to limit your caffeine intake to less than 200 milligrams, or two cups of coffee, per day. Most recreational drugs are not safe in pregnancy either, but some, such as long-term opioid use due to dependence or chronic illness, can be continued after discussion with your provider. There are genetic screening tests that you and your partner can get to find out if you carry the genes for common diseases. With this information, you can make informed decisions about becoming pregnant and the risk of the fetus having the gene or disease, and whether you would continue or terminate the pregnancy if they did inherit it. Even the events of your daily life should be discussed. Depending on your work and where you live, you might be exposed to chemicals and environmental pollutants that can cause birth defects, called teratogens. If you interact with young children, it's important to protect yourself from illnesses they may have. And if you have a cat, you should not change the litter box to protect from an infection called toxoplasmosis. Finally, pregnancy is a time when interpersonal violence can occur or worsen if you're already experiencing it. If you feel comfortable sharing this with your provider, they can support you and provide resources for your safety. See the description below for several links. 
For staying to the end, here is another topic that is extremely important to review, your previous pregnancies and any complications that occurred. In medicine, if something has happened once, there is often an increased chance for it to happen again. Tell your OBGYN provider about any complications that occurred throughout your previous pregnancies, during the deliveries of the fetus and placenta, and during the postpartum period. Thanks for watching. Now hit that subscribe button and like the video. Then check out this other video to keep learning.